Welcome back to the Webby and O'Neill channel. Hope you've all had a great Easter weekend with your family and friends, for everyone out there who's been celebrating it. But that is not why we're here today. I mean, after that Brentford game, Eric Tanagi come out with some questionable comments. A man who looks like he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders. Looks like he's aged 10 years since he's even been here after that Brentford game. But first of all, how are you feeling? Oh, I'm still down, me. Uh, that, that was terrible uh, on Saturday night and I've not got over what I witnessed. Uh, I've listened to comments, uh, what have been said, absolutely baffling. Uh, I've read lots of people's comments uh, after the game. Mm. Uh, absolutely a diverse uh, accounts of what people are saying about the manager, uh, about the players, about the game. Uh, I've just had a terrible weekend, to be honest with you. Uh, and, and I'm more baffled now than at any time uh, watching Manchester United for a long time about the reaction from people, from the manager, from players. Uh, I'm just shell-shocked, to be honest with you. Yeah, you're sounding quite quiet there as well. It's like it's really affected you a bit. I'm not, I, I'm not quiet. I'm just waiting to get started <laughs> on what we're about to say yeah. uh, and comments what have been there. I, I mean, I was pretty excitable Saturday night. Uh, got out what I did in a in, in what I consider a reasonable manner. Uh, but at the end of the day, it is absolutely... I've just read what people are... If I'm down, I've read your comments out there and how people uh, can get out of bed because uh, I've struggled. I've struggled to get to sleep. It's been a terrible weekend. Well, well, there's a lot of comments already flying in, so keep getting your comments in because we do want to get you involved today and we will read out some of your comments. But... Like I say, I'm going to go back to that Brentford game. I've got a couple of stats here, to which then I'm going to go over to a piece what Eric Ten Hag said straight after the game. Now, the stats are that Brentford had 85 touches in the Man United box, the most any team has managed in the Premier League in the last five years. Man United also conceded 31 shots against Brentford. Now, in 2024, Manchester United have conceded 181 shots in the Premier League more than any other side. Now, that's to say that's leaker is an understatement. Now, Eric Ten Hag, after the game, he was also asked if he's concerned by the amount of shots United have faced. And he says, as long as we get results, no. We lost many second balls, and then you have to defend the box. And that's what we did quite well. And we had a great goalkeeper. We conceded shots, but we don't concede many goals. Now... I'm a little bit baffled by that. I'm glad you're here, so you take over. Them stats are absolutely horrendous, and I don't know what the reaction is going to be from people out there on Eric Ten Hag turning around and saying he's not worried about it as long as he gets a result. That is damning. That is terrible. Uh, not just on the manager, on the players, but for the manager to come out and say, say he's not worried, I, I'm, I'm baffled by it. And, and this is what I heard over the weekend, and it has concerned me. It just seems to me, and you said it at the beginning, he just looks lost, uh, and he's just coming out with things, and, and I just don't get it at all, uh, and I can't see where we're going to go from here. Yeah, I'd be far less concerned if Eric Ten Hag actually acknowledged that this was actually a problem, and he was actually trying to address it, but to me, when he's coming out and he's saying he doesn't see that it's a problem, and it's only you know, a case of us getting the results. Well, Man United have been lucky in a lot of games this season, especially in the turn of 2024, where we've been nicking late goals. And for me, if, if you're not looking at that and you're seeing that's a problem, it's going to end up being a big problem for you come the end of the season, because I can't see us getting that many good results that you're wanting uh, from now until the end of the season when you look at some of the fixtures we've got. Well, I, can't, I, can't, I don't understand him at all. Uh, I don't understand the players. I don't understand mm. the club. I don't understand anything what's going on at this moment in time. Because when you see performances like you did on Saturday and poor performances mm. keep happening and it's a Jekyll and Hyde situation, uh, then what's Derek Tanak talking about? Does he not see that as a problem? Uh, we all see it as a problem. You know, to win things, to be better, you have to improve on the pitch. And when Eric Ten Hag turns around and says the players don't have desire, we've said it, we said it on Saturday, desire, motivation and everything like that, then he's calling the players out, he's calling it on and it's a big problem and it's a big problem for Ineos, so Jim Ratcliffe and everything. How do they deal with this? Because as far as I'm concerned, listening to Eric Ten Hag, 
watching what the players do, it's broken, completely broken. You know, the players have no desire. Eric Ten Hag can't motivate these players. We can see it. And there's only one outcome what normally happens when you see what you're seeing on Saturday. Yeah. Um, uh, what's his name? Squire Seven. Cheers for your super chat, mate. He says he's gutted about the result. Another Horlicks for our Tony. Big love to all. Thanks for joining us, mate, and getting your comment in. Now, I just wanted to go down to another comment from Martin Kinsella. And he says, also, the old crap of no consistency with this team is rubbish. It's just players picking and choosing when they could be bothered, trying or not. Do you think that's partly down to the reasons we've been seeing these results this season? Some of these players don't care. They just don't care. Uh, they're not listening to the tactics. Uh, some players might not be able to adapt to the tactics. Eric Ten Hag hasn't changed them around, but some of these players, and we have seen it time and time again, I did say on Saturday, it's not all the players' fault, you know, it's not all the manager's fault, but some of these players just do not care. You've seen players there not putting the tackling, not running back, not caring. And as Eric Ten Hag said, there was no desire there. But you have to also turn around and say, where was the motivation? Where, where's it gone? Where's it gone from the manager? Where's it gone from the players? There is a big, big crisis here at Man United. And as I've said, Eric Ten Hag, in his comments, if you've watched this uh, post-match interview, he's calling the players out. That's what he's doing. That's how I see it. When you turn around and you say there is no desire, no motivation from these players then it's carnage. But to set standards, I get what you're saying, if he's, he's truly wanting to set standards and he's calling the players out for a lack of desire, then most of them who started against Brentford or even come on shouldn't play in the next game against Chelsea then surely because if you then keep on consistently playing these players who are not giving their all in the game, so to speak, well, they'll just pick and choose when to put in a performance then surely. Yeah, I agree. Because they know they're going to probably get picked in the following game, even if they throw a turkey in. I agree with that. Uh, but the problem is we haven't got the squad to replace these players where we know we're going to get a performance out of some of these players. And if you look, and uh, you know, I did say it on Saturday and I'll say it again, you explain to me, I'm asking you out there, you explain to me how a player consistently doesn't run, has no motivation, has no desire to tackle, chase, run back, get involved in the game and just jog on a consistently basis, game after game. How does a manager, how does a manager pick a player what does that? And we've got that player and I do not understand how a player that is playing so badly mm. for 90 minutes in a game consistently gets picked. And you want to turn around and drop players. I, I get what you're saying. I think everyone out there will be saying the same and I'm saying the same, right? Drop them, but there's no one to replace them. But how, how is a player playing like Marcus Rashford, playing week in, week out? We have got big problems. That needs to be answered, and I don't know the answer to it. The thing what? is, I think most of us accept, I know me and you have had plenty of chats about it, that we're not going to get Champions League football uh, this season for next season. So why doesn't he start then trying to blood some of the youth through to see if they're capable and they're at a standard for next season? Get it done now, because like I say, a lot of these players might not be here next season. So start having a look at some of these youth players. You know, a couple of the left-backs, you know, I've got a left-back situation now of Luke Shaw, my last year out. Let's see if there's a young kid at left-back position. Bring him in to see if he's good enough for next season. There's other players' positions there as well, maybe in midfield or in the wide areas. Let's have a look at him. I mentioned this Because they're going to give something. They're yeah. at least going to give you the fight and the desire, the young kids, because they want to impress. This conversation we had last year, lots of youths out there, was joining in the conversation about giving the youth a chance, giving certain players a chance. It never happened, uh, and it's not going to happen now. I get what you're saying, mm. right? But at the end of the day, he wants a result. He wants to win every game. That's what his mantra is. That's what he says, OK? He's not going to do that. He never did it last year when there was opportunities. in uh, Like rotating the squad to fresh. When we had cup games. Yeah. You, you, we had cup games. He could have done it, and he never did it. And there were certain games uh, where we was winning and he never brought players on. It was confusing. He's not going to do it. He's, and, and the fact is... The pressure what's on him now, mm. he can't do it. 
He looks like he's got the weight of the world on his shoulders, like I said before. He looks absolutely cooked, especially after that Brentford game and the press conference. But I'm just going to go to something in the chat, and he's refreshed my memory, and I'm sure it will do with you and a lot of his out there. Philip says, Eric Ten Hag says every match is a cup final. Well, Eric managed a team like you mean it. And how many times had he said in the last few weeks that they've got to treat every game like a final to get into the Champions League places? Well, every game... Do you see him treating these games like finals in the way he's setting up tactically? He might be treating it like a cup final uh, in training and everything else like that. But he can clearly see mm -hmm. that these players aren't treating it like a cup final. I'm not saying that every player... You know, there's players there what want to play. But there's lots of players in this team, in this squad, what aren't treating it as a cup final. They're just treating it as, oh, well, it's another game. I'll be out of here in the summer or he'll be gone. That's how I see. And Saturday's game was a perfect ex example for everybody to see that these players either didn't have a clue or didn't care. And I'm going to say that a lot of them didn't care. Yeah, good comments. Uh, I'm just going to go into the chat, Mick Cypher. Cheers for your super chat, mate. He says, is Eric Ten Hag playing the way Ineos want? Eric Ten Hag is a disgrace to call out players. He's the leader and isn't adapting. The players and manager need to go. Now, I've heard Eric Ten Hag saying he wants to play proactive, high-intensity football. I've also heard that in Sir Jim Ratcliffe's interviews in basically stating that there's going to be a Manchester United style and a way of football going forward. But, you know, is Eric Ten Hag really on the same page as what Ineos want? Well, the thing is, I hear what, I hear what he's saying. But the, que the question here is, you know, is, it, is he doing what Ineos want? Is he doing the right things in the background? And is it the players on the pitch what aren't doing the right thing? Listen... How do Ineos react to this? Because this game on Saturday was a disgrace. And Eric Ten Hag, in my view, is now calling the players out. So how do Ineos react going forward? It's going to be very interesting. To be perfectly blunt with you, I haven't got a clue how they're going to react to this because I'm not sure whose fault it is. You would expect Sir Jim Brailsford and the people who are in there running the football side of it will know what's going on. So if there is a clear move in one direction or the other, you will know that Ineos are reacting to it. Or they could just be sat like we have to do. We have to sit on our hands and wait and see. And I think Ineos might be doing that and pre pre preparing to act at the end of the season. But how do you react to that on Saturday? I'm ab it kept me awake. I've had terrible time. It's not just been Saturday, though, is it? No, you know, if you look at some of no. the results all season, yeah, you know, yeah. against Fulham, Bournemouth, Nottingham Forest, Crystal Palace, you know, the lesser teams, there seems to be a real concern there about motivating these players. Well, why do we keep, why do we keep seeing performances like we it's did on Saturday? not just this season, either, no, is no, it? It's no, been no, over not just Eric Ten Hag uh, being manager. It's been previous to that as well against the lesser teams these players in this squad that just have a real well big issue about getting themselves motivated well the thing is they get they have an issue being motivated that is it ten Hag? don't they like ten Hag? but then we go back uh, about people getting motivated playing week in week out you know players mm -hmm. have to play at least 60 games a year a top side you know, if you want to be challenging for things, you have to be... So where's the motivation, mm. you know? And at the end of the day, the performances keep happening. And is it the right thing? Is it the... Do we go back to the scenario of removing the manager? The, 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 and the thing is, Ineos might see Eric Ten Hag as the problem and remove him in the summer. They might look at it the other way. But the thing is, it's a... It keeps my problem, happening. With, my problem with that would be if they was to remove Eric Ten Hag, most of these players would get another chance to impress another manager, and they'll turn it on for a few months, maybe a season, and then they'll go back to form of what we've seen over the past four, five, seven, eight years. Well, this is the conundrum we're all in. We need a massive clear out, and if Eric Ten Hag's a part of that, that's what Ineos want. So be it. But yeah. at the end of the day, you just hope that a lot of the players who have been consistently turning up when they want go out with him. And then it is a total reset, fresh start. I, 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 but me personally, I want Eric Tanag to have that third year and be given a backing with a structure in place. So then they, there is no excuses from anyone in the coaching staff and Eric Ten Hag. It's either you've got everything you've been given, you know, you fall on your sword. I look at it this way, OK? Ineos have come in, 
putting the money in, going to put lots more money in, we hope, as time goes on. And what normally happens is, and I keep saying it, right, they have a fresh start. That, mean, mm. that might mean a fresh start with lots of players going out mm. and the manager and the coaching staff going out. They've got their own ideas. And at the end of the day, you can't remove one, OK, without removing the other. That's how I see it, because Ineos might see it as they're all a problem. They're all a problem. They might see it as Ten Hag isn't good enough. They might see it that these players aren't good enough. So you might see in the summer a clear out on both sets. So at the end of the day, some people arguing it's Eric Ten Hag's fault or some people arguing it's the players' fault. Really, we've just got to wait and see. And it's an argument what will go on. We look what's happened on the pitch. There is no excuse for any player playing anywhere, whether it's in the Premier League, Champions League, or on a Sunday morning or a Saturday afternoon on Acne Marshes. There is no excuse for any player to go on the pitch and have no desire, because why are you there? And when you look around at how much these players are on to have no desire, then they get nothing from me. All they get is a finger straight at them and, a, and the truth is being told these players are a disgrace for having no motivation and no desire for you or for me or for you. I think when you talk about wages, I think that's partly a problem as well because of how much they are paid. I think that there's some of them in there, it's took the motivation out of them and they think they've made it anyway and they're just getting paid X amount of money per week, no matter what performance they put in on the pitch. But I'm just going to go into the chat. Uh, AGB, cheers for your super chat, Thank my you. mate. He says, uh, open heart surgery is still required. Famous Ran Ralph Rangnick quote. Yeah, yeah. Getting up at all hours to watch the Reds in Australia is painful to see these performances, and I'm sure it is, mate, at getting up at them times. Feel, feel, lad. 2 a.m., 3 a.m., I'm sure, 4 a.m. Um, going back into the chat again, uh, Akish Paul, cheers for your super chat, my mate. Thank you. He says, more evidence of players choosing when to perform, but I think Eric Ten Hag is under pressure to not drop players because of this year's shambolic squad building. Well, you, you mentioned they're under pressure not to drop players. This is the question, mm. you know, what has to be asked to Eric Ten Hag or someone in the know. OK, I don't know who that is. Why does someone play so poorly with an attitude like he's got for 90 minutes in a game, right, and he is picked week after week? I don't see any top manager or any manager, right, anywhere picking a player for so long, for months and months, and still picking him when he's not doing what he's supposed to do. I do not, I do not understand that. So there is a major issue going on inside the club, and Ineos must know what it is. So it's, it, it's going to be interesting to see how they react, OK, whether Marcus Rashford stays, because you cannot have a player with that attitude on the pitch who is jogging and jogging and jogging and not caring. Yeah, just to go back to Ralph Ranick there, I remember when he first came in his first game against Crystal Palace here at Old Trafford, wasn't it? Yeah. And we've seen 30 minutes of high-intensity football, and after that, we've never seen it never again. Never seen it again. And that's all down to the players. Yeah, yeah. Not wanting to run. That's right. Not wanting to take on the instructions, I'll do what I want, so to speak, on the pitch. That's right. And, and you look at what's going on now, and, and, and I've looked at it over the weekend, I keep looking at it and changing my mind on this opinion, like lots of yous out there have been doing. Like I say, I've been reading your comments, and they're interesting, and mm -hmm. they go back back and yeah. forth, back and forth. And I just look at it and you have to ask yourself, is it this, is it the tactics? So the tactics, down to the manager, the coaching staff. Is it the players? You know, is it the players' desire, the motivation, what they've got? Is it the quality, you know, or is it a combination? And that's what Ineoff have to answer and they have to act on whatever they think it is. And is it tactics, players, quality? I don't know. Uh, because I know there's big trouble in there, but there's been big trouble in there for a long time. So, big clear out. We all know that's coming, but who, who's going? Who's staying? Uh, yeah, Martin says in the chat, United are the best walking football team in the world. And <laughs> what, what, yeah, what, what, what a comment, that absolutely. Yeah, that's that, the best one I've heard yeah, so far, to be yeah, fair, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah, Paul Lowry says, I honestly think our players can't cope with Ten Hag's tactics. They're not intelligent enough, but... Yeah. You've got to look at, as well, how that midfield just gets cut open time and time again. And we've been seeing it ever since the first game of the season at home here to Wolves. 
Listen, so is it the tactics? Is it the players? I'm not sure because then when you go and look at the uh, result and how we set up against Liverpool away, away to Manchester City, it's set up tactically different because he knew the midfield wouldn't be able to cope with it. So why isn't he then doing it each game? Players, OK, play football. And what they do, they adapt to what the manager wants, home and away. Home and away in a European uh, tie, that changes, the mentality changes. These players, right, are international footballers because of the skill and they're able to adapt. There is no reason why they can't adapt mm. to a manager. We go away once or twice. I've seen a defensive block like at Liverpool. Yeah. Most of the time it's at City, obviously it didn't work, yeah. okay? They adapt. That's what they're there for. They mix in training. They always have done as a kid. That's what you're brought up to do. Yeah. Adapt to the tactics. Adapt to the, uh, the team you're playing. You know, you have to adapt if you're suddenly up against a right big six foot six giant of a centre half yeah. or, a, you know, or a midfield player. This is what football's all about. And this is why you're called a professional footballer because you're good at adapting to situations. And managers have to be good to adapt to situations. And clearly, they're not doing it. And that's the manager and the players. Yeah, Akash Paul, cheers for Super Chat, mate. He says, this clear out in the summer will be limited by FFP. Well, I think it's, I don't know. You look I don't know. Yeah, at the end of the day, there's a lot of players there, though, isn't there? Where I think Ineos are looking at it financially as well with the actual high earners here at Manchester United that they will want to shift off the books because they will want to recruit in. But again, how many teams out there are going to actually want to buy any of these players we're looking to offload? There's not going to be many due to the wages. Uh, I, I don't. be tough. I don't know about FFP. I don't know about how much we've got in the bank. Yeah. I don't know how much we're allowed to spend. And to be honest with you, I'm not sure anyone at this stage does yeah okay Ashley knows the figure of what we can the spend, actual yeah. figure so there is problems and ffp will come into it but how much that comes into it i don't know but players have to go and i'm sure ineos will be looking at getting rid of some eye earners i don't expect ineos to be able to get rid of a lot of players especially the nine players some of you were calling for on saturday to get them out of the club yeah lollipop says mason mount and ahmad added to this team will help big time. I think Mason Mount will. Um, well, we hope so. And it was a bit of a positive from that Brentford game, seeing him get on the actual score sheet, first United goal. Yeah, yeah, first United goal. It was good to, good to see him yeah. do that. Uh, he, needs, he needs more of that. That was a great confidence lifter. You can't take that yeah. away, right? But a confidence lifter, which was soon brought right down to earth. Yeah. So how he reacts to that. But it's going to be interesting to see how the players, the club, the manager reacts to what's going on. But... Yeah, but most of all, it's going to be interesting. How is everyone going to react to Eric Tenag telling professional players that they had no desire? Yeah, really calling them out. Called them out, yeah. called them out big time. You cannot get a bigger insult. Mm -hmm. You're playing for Manchester United. You know what the opposition is going to do. Mm -hmm. They're going to raise the game every time Manchester United are in town. You know that. And I think when I look at the game, uh, I look at half time and I think Eric Ten Hag and I think them players as well thought to themselves right they were rubbing their hands thinking right Brentford's run the ball they finished they've done all the running they've done all the chasing I think they thought that they wouldn't be able to continue and fair credit and I did call them a bad team which I shouldn't have done but that was my emotions going Brentford came out there and raised the game and wanted it more than they did in the first half and like I said after 10, 15 minutes of that first half, Brentford went, who are these? Who are these? These are nothing. Let's go for it. And United got a shot. But I think the cockiness of these players, right? And I, thought, and I think also the manager, because the manager played a part in that second half performance. He should have changed what we all seen. Rashford, Garnacho were not doing it. So one of them, at minimum, had to come off. And I thought Casemiro should have come on there and then. Do you think they've actually got the, you know, the front four? Rashford, Hoyland, Bruno, Garnacho. They've actually got the football intelligence in knowing how to press and when to press. Because pressing, it's not just about running. It's about timing and knowing when to press. We haven't got a midfield. What, can, what, what hasn't got timing? because they're never together for 90 minutes throughout the game. They're always split up. You've got an attack, 
you've got a defence and the midfield either choose to go back or go forward. The midfield, that has been the problem consistently since Eric Ten Hag has got here. Because I noticed the big problem with when United were pressing, like let's say the back four of Brentford or the goalkeeper, they were just then pinging it out to the left back who was in acres of space. And you had like the front four who had just pushed up and it was like, Every time, they just had lots of grass to run into. Yeah, but you can say that, and, I'm, and lots of people have said it this year, last year. There is acres of grass in the middle of the pitch, yeah. and no one has been able to sort it out. Whether Eric Ten Hag is being stubborn, mm. and that's the way he's going to go, and he's not going to change his mind. Is that the way Ineos want to play? Because Eric Ten Hag... This is his second season, has not changed his tactics on how he goes out week in, week out, unless he comes up against City or Liverpool. So Ineos might have already looked at that and go, well, you're stubborn, Eric. Mm. They might have already made the mind up. You know, I'm not happy about that midfield situation, how Eric Ten Hag deals with it, yeah. OK? Is it the quality of the players? I'm not sure. Does he think he's going to get better players to be able to do it? I'm not sure. But at the end of the day, he's not going to change his mind. So yeah. that's where I think Ineos will be looking at and going, that's how we want to play. Like that, Eric, let's get quality players in. Or they might be turning around and going... We agree with everyone out there that that midfield is not capable with them tactics to play like that. And they might choose to keep some players and say, we're going to adapt. We've got a new manager. Let's give him a chance. That might be the scenario. Yeah, Nick P said in the chat, we ran five miles less than Brentford in that game. I've not seen that stat myself, but thanks for getting involved and letting us know that. There's a lot of people been mentioning it in the chat. I can't really pick out just one name, but they're talking about the captain, Sir Bruno Fernandes, basically saying that he's still not a leader. What's needed for this Manchester United team? That's right. Whatever leader you've had out there, whatever captain you know, you've had out there for, for many years now has not been good enough. Now, uh, maybe players don't react to him. But we, maybe players don't care. We've been saying that consistently now. You looked at Saturday, did players care? No, a lot of them didn't. And they might not care uh, about the, the captain. If they don't care on the pitch, they don't care about anything else. So the captain is just getting blanked. Now, is the captain good enough? Is he good enough on the pitch? Now, there's questions about that. Is, the, is his performance is good enough? Is the things he, do, he does on the pitch good enough and, uh, for the Manchester United captain? And a lot of it, I say, isn't. And then he has his moments. But the thing is, that's what this team has become. It's become well, like its captain. Moments. Yeah. Moments in games. Uh, that's the, what it's become. But the top teams, they're not just relying on one leader, though. All the players out on the field are leaders they all want to win they've all got that desire to win and work for each other as a team everybody out there you see Bruno Fernandes in games and you always know when Manchester United are in trouble when you see Bruno Fernandes helping out at left back centre back right back everywhere where he shouldn't be and that's like he's taking on the responsibility himself everybody out there knows that the top teams all the players are captains all of them because they all fight for each other and they all G each other up and they all help each other and then they always look to the other man, the top man, right? That's their inspiration. They're all looking, these Manchester United players, at Bruno, Bruno Fernandes rolling around on the floor with his ankle, waving his arms about, right? Getting distracted. And at the end of the day, Bruno Fernandes, right, is the least injured player of Manchester United and he's the most player is the most consistent player what rolls about on the field. And players might be, as they say, pissed off with it. Yeah. Like a lot of yous out there are pissed off with it. And we are also. Yeah, Ian Dewa, uh, good comment. Tommy did Tommy Doherty moment. Clear out, play the youngsters, take a chance. We're being strangled through fear of failure. I agree, I agree. But the thing is, I go back to my comment earlier on. Eric Ten Hag doesn't do that. Eric Ten Hag doesn't do chances by bringing people in, OK? He sticks with his mantra. He did it last year, he's done it this year. He's afraid at times. We've had players come in because of injury, and that's all they've come in for this year, because of injuries. Yeah, people talking about Chelsea on Thursday night, but would it surprise you out there if we went and got the three points and put in a performance on Thursday? Because it wouldn't actually surprise me. If you look at the... If I'm correcting it, a lot of the results at Chelsea have been uh, draws, 
uh, a lot of the time. But would it surprise? Yeah. No, it wouldn't. And I keep using that uh, expression. Man United is a Jekyll and Hyde side. That's what it is. You just don't know what you're getting from one day to the other. And the thing is, the rea you have to have the reality. And the reality is, you don't know what you're getting. It's poor. It's poor from them all. Yeah. Uh, Rhino says, great managers choose great captains. There's no excuse. Don't blame Bruno, blame Ten Hag. At the end of the day, the manager is the main captain. But you look at around that squad, who else would you choose as captain, Ryan? Let me know what you think, mate. You look at the captaincy and, and there's been like arguments, discussions about it for a long time. Players turned it down. Players turned it down. That tells you yeah. really at the heart of what these players are. What the culture is. In what the culture room. is. Everyone, you know, we just mentioned it. Every player should be a captain on the pitch. These players aren't. They haven't got their heart and they've not had it for a long time. And at the end of the day, Bruno's ended up with the captaincy because he's the best of what's left. Yeah, you can tell Bruno at least cares about the club. Yes. He wants to try and put it in every single game on the pitch. Doesn't always get it right. Some of his antics... You know, sometimes leaves a little bit of a bad taste in your mouth, so to speak, with his petulance. But you can see the lad he cares about the club and he's willing to put in the hard yards. He's a player who you know would go through a pain barrier to just stay on that pitch and help out the team. Listen, whereas a lot of them others wouldn't. He cares. He obviously cares. We know that. You see it from him. But the thing is, he's not consistent enough. He's not good enough. OK, because if he was good enough, you'd play well virtually every game. And he is no different than what goes on what we see, Jekyll and Hyde, inconsistency, you never know what you're getting. And that's not good for as a captain. Is that Just, because Bruno's been made to play every single game though and he's not getting a rest though, where he needs maybe a little bit of time out, you know, sat on the subs bench, watching a bit of game of football, get himself recharged and then go again? No, that says something about the manager. That says something about the strength of the manager, not being able to lay down the law to his captain, I want you to do this, I don't want that, I don't want that, and I don't want that. The law gets laid down by the manager and the coaches, and he is not having the law laid down to him. It's as though he is able to go out there because he's the captain, uh, and he's then supposed to deal with what's going on but on the pitch. But when you see Bruno Fernandes go away on an international duty, he performs every time. Every time I see Portugal or I look at the actual comments on Portugal, Bruno Fernandes has either got an assist, he's got a goal, or he's had a great performance when he's on international duty, and that's a much higher standard than I think, personally, than what he's playing against in the Premier League when he's throwing in poor performances, so to speak. I don't watch Portugal, but I get what you're saying. But what I do, and what everyone else out there, I'm giving my reaction to, to, to Bruno, what I see from him with my own eyes. Mm. And I see it week in, week out, is not consistent. And I see players not reacting to him as a leader because they don't care. And at the end of the day, it's down to the manager to sort it out. And you can look on Saturday and say, absolutely, <laughs> Nothing was sorted out. It was as bad as anything I can remember. Yeah, anything more to add? No. Any comments coming in through the chat, to be fair? And the captain, just Manchester United performances in general. Let me know out there what you think the score will be on Thursday. Do you think Man United will decide to turn up the players on Thursday and actually get the three points? It wouldn't surprise me the least, to be honest. No, nothing. Listen, nothing in football surprises me. Nothing uh, with this squad, with this club surprises me. But at the end of the day, I ha and this is what's got me, there's no desire, no commitment. The manager's saying it. The manager's saying it. And it's now, has he been able to say this because he's in conjunction with Ineos and the people running the football? Are they, are they, are they all in line together? Because if not, Eric Ten Hag has spoken out and he will be isolated now inside that club. So the big question and the, and the thing to come is how do Ineos react to this situation? It's, it, the time is here. Yeah. And, and I go back to, to it. You know, when, when, when a manager can't motivate his players, right, and when players have sort of give up on the pitch and there's no desire, right, there's only one outcome and it's how Ineos react to this. That, that's how I see it now. Mm. Going forward, I've no great desire, right, at the moment, to watch United because I'm losing sleep, I'm losing concentration, I'm getting myself angry, I'm having bad weekends and everything else like that. I'm not looking forward to the games. 
The Liverpool game was a one-off. It happens, but that's Manchester United, and that's what you see. Yeah, they still should have put us to the sword, shouldn't they, really, in that second half, if we're no. honest with ourselves. Liverpool, they should have took the chances. No, I'm not being honest. Well, you don't be honest. Then, not being honest. We have... fully deserved it. Ah, OK, I get We what's... fully deserved it. Tell everyone out there and look them in the face. We fully deserve to beat Liverpool, and I'm not bothered. Oh, we fully deserve to beat them because they didn't take the chances, but Liverpool should have put us to the sword in that second half, the way they dominated the game. Scott McTominay had chances. Rashford, Rashford had chances. So at the end of the day, it works both ways. Yeah, just like it did for Liverpool earlier in the season in the league game against Newcastle. The young in there, you know, Newcastle missed a few chances. They ended up winning the game, but um, yeah, going off that... Let's have another... Like to, Another. One more. There's plenty coming through, to be honest. OK. Uh, RSI, I'm going to read it out because he says, good show, guys. Thank Bru you. Bruno and Rashford show. Uh, Bruno and Rashford show be taken off when not playing well and it's not happening. Basically saying that when Bruno and Rashford aren't playing well, they should be taken off. But, you know, Rashford is being took off. But, listen, is it early enough? Should he even be starting games? That's another... But, the, but, but the, 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 that's one thing on Bruno. Over the weekend, I have looked at the comments and a lot of people are actually talking about Bruno, saying he's not a captain, he's not good enough, he shouldn't be here. So the debate is going on and I, I have to accept that Bruno isn't showing what a captain should be for Manchester United. And I also have to accept that you don't see Bruno week in, week, eat, week, week, in, week out doing what he should. So it's going to be interesting from a captain's point of view for, for Bruno to see what comes in the summer. I'd just like to say as well, obviously Mason Mount's come back now. Yeah. You know, for me personally, you might have a different opinion out there, but his best position is actually where Bruno plays. So if Bruno's still like maybe throwing stinkers in to some people's opinion, shouldn't Eric Tenag then change it and put Mason Mount there? Well, you, you, and then you, tell Bruno is to basically say, look, if you want to get back in this team, you're going to have to up your performances. I don't think Eric Tenag will do that, but I get, I get what you're saying. Because that should go for every single player in the squad, uh, whether the, you're captain or not. The, 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 there's no change of direction with Eric Tenag. It's going to stay the same. Okay, what you what you might see is if Eric Tenag is removed and a new manager comes in, you might be able to see them working together. If Bruno stays, you just don't know. But th that won't happen. He will not take Bruno's position while Eric Ten Hag's here. Yeah, I, I, me personally... My, that's my opinion. Yeah, my own opinion is I don't think Bruno's the biggest problem in this, no, in he's this not. squad. I think he's no, way, he's not. way, 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 way down yeah, that yeah, list he is. at the minute. I think there's much he bigger is. problems in the squad behind the scenes as well. Mick Seifer says, Ineos not publicly supporting Eric Tanag speaks volumes. He's a dead man walking, but... Would you expect Man United to keep coming out and, you know, answering everything that's out in the press about the manager of the club? You know, I, you, you don't want you don't want the club to come out. Yeah, keep okay. constantly coming you out. You know, Eric Ten Hag's told us, and and if we're to believe what he's saying, he's communicating regular with Ineos. He's communicating yeah. on the plans for next summer, but well, for this summer coming. Yeah. So why did he need to come out when you're listening to Eric Ten Hag? That's what's happening. They're working together for the benefit of Manchester United and the long term, what's going on here. So at the end of the day, why would they, why should they come out? You don't want a club to keep coming out because the press keeps saying things and this is happening and this is happening. No, I don't see it that way. You're only feeding the people what are there to slag you off and give you hate. No, don't give them, don't give them the oxygen. That's how I see it. Yeah. Anything else to add? We no, no, I'm, I'm fine now. I've woken up now. Yeah. Uh, Paul seems to think that we sit on the fence. Who? Uh, a guy called Paul. Uh, they sit on the fence, these two. Good show, but they sit on the fence. I've never known myself, or especially you and Webby, ever, ever, ever to sit on the fence in anything that's discussed on this show. More so than not having to reel you back in. That's probably why I'm here more often than not. But he's actually asked... Would you sell Rashford? Me, personally, I'd sell him in a heartbeat. Whoa. I would sell him in a heartbeat, get him gone and invest it into someone else coming into the club. I'd look at that Kravitz Scalia me at Napoli. I think it'd be an absolutely great player, not just at Manchester United, but in the Premier League. But, you know, I'm not the Manchester United manager. I ain't running Manchester United. So they're not going to listen to what I've got to say. I'm only giving my opinion as a fan. Well, I think Rashford's had enough time, enough chances to prove himself as a, a world-class or a top player here at Manchester United. And he's done it really for one season. But his overall game, even in last season for 90 minutes, still wasn't good enough. 
but I, he scored the goals which we needed. So I don't understand that how you can how you can say in one breath that we sit on the fence and then ask us would we sell Rashford? Where where are you coming from? I, I, I'm not sure. You might have just been he just wants his comment read out probably, yeah, but that's no problem. No, we will, no, we'll answer he, it. He, he might have just started uh, joining. I don't know. But Paul, you've not got yours in though. You're saying thanks, Kieran. You get your opinion in would you sell Rashford and why and who you would bring in. You know, we're all here to give our opinions and it's about also doing this channel for you to get your opinions in. That's why we do it. So you let us know if you'd sell Rashford, who are you to bring in, what your, all your opinions are. That's what it's about. The problem with Rashford, who'd buy him? That's well, another people day. say PSG. He ain't going PSG. There's no chance no. that Marcus Rashford at his age would go to PSG. Not that I, I, he wouldn't go. Not that he wouldn't go. It's would PSG buy him? But then again, I, I ask yourself about Marcus Rashford, and I ask yourself not because I don't want, just want to use Marcus Rashford. Marcus Rashford isn't the only problem at Manchester United. There are many, many players. Mm. What are the problem? Okay, and you have to ask yourself who's going to buy players like Marcus Rashford, who is not performing, who has no commitment, no desire. The only commitment and desire he's mm. got and entertainment and everything is off field with his PR and his publicity stunts. Well, yeah, that's it. And it just looks like the way he's playing on the pitch, his body language, you know, just not caring, looking like he's not caring. I think he probably just needs to change himself. Go and get a fresh challenge, a new direction somewhere else because it's clearly not working. You can't still keep hiding behind off-field issues, you know, throughout a season. I don't, I, I, I don't take that. He, 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 you know, he clearly needs somewhere a fresh start and all that. This man played football, put the ball in the back of the net, okay, and dilly dallied, dilly dallied for a contract and waited and waited and forced the issue on United. OK, and then got a massive pay rise. Yeah. He used PSG right? as leverage to get okay. the highest contract he could here at Manchester United. He had everyone over and his attitude and everything shows that and it stinks. And I'm, I'm not just saying it now. So anyone coming out there saying, oh, you're jumping on the Marcus bandwagon and all that, slagging him off You've been because other people... Two, three years. two years I've been saying it, minimum, about Marcus Rashford. OK, he had everyone over and I have consistently said I do not trust and haven't trusted Marcus Rashford for at least two years. And I think what he's doing now proves my point. Yeah, Squire 7, this is the best Man United free speech channel going. Much appreciated for your super chat, my mate. And yeah, I believe in free speech. I believe in free speech. I believe as well. in free speech. And it's that's what it's all about, getting you involved in there. But Paul, I don't know where you've gone, mate, because you've still not given your opinion on actual uh, Rashford and you want him to stay or not. You're now actually talking about does anyone rate Xavi Simmons? But I'm not gonna go there, but I'd just like to thank everyone for getting involved yes. in the chat today. You know, some you know, the comments in there have been absolutely popping off on Eric Tenag, the players, the captains say uh, also much appreciated, all the love as well with the channel. It's much appreciated always. Yes. Reds. Um, we will be back tomorrow with another video. We'll probably do another live video. So get your notifications on and we'd just like to wish you an happy Monday. Thank you. Thank you.